All right, guys, so in this video, I want to talk a little bit about all of these uh, lithium ion battery packs that have been coming out lately. And I got a few of these here that I've been trying out and doing some testing. Now, this isn't really super scientific or anything like that. I'm just going to kind of give you some general guidelines on what to expect when you're using these and how you should be using these and for what purposes. So, if you're thinking that you could replace your normal lithium polymer or lipo pack, uh, for like racing or some sort of high amp draw situation or purpose, uh, these are not for those kinds of situations. Um, now, you know, if there's someone out there that's winning five inch uh, drone races with lithium ion packs, uh, do let me know down in the comments below because maybe I don't know who that is or if I haven't heard that news, but I doubt that's the case because um, if you're looking for high performance battery packs, you don't want to be using lithium ion packs. Uh, these are for more for uh, basically long endurance, longer flight times, and lower amp draw, lower current draw situations where you're going to be flying long range for longer periods of time. Uh, you're not going to get massive amounts of current from these batteries. So that being said, um, there's going to be some people that are going to be down in the comments and saying that, yeah, we should just buy your own 18650 batteries, you know, like, for example, these Molly cells here and make your own packs. It's going to be way cheaper. That's totally true. Uh, if you make your own packs, they're going to be cheaper. But I can tell you right now that these 18650 batteries are no joke. Uh, if you don't know what you're doing and you short this battery, you will have a big fire, especially if it's fully charged. Um, people have burned their houses down. So I want to put a disclaimer out there. If you don't know what you're doing, you probably are way better off just spending a little extra money and buying something that's pre-built versus trying to save, uh, you know, a few bucks and burning your house down. So, you know, that's the trade-off you're willing to make, then by all means, I hope you have good insurance. Anyway, now that we've gotten that out of the way, um, you know, these packs here are, there's so many out there now. Uh, they, they, it was kind of funny, like not too long ago, there weren't a whole lot of these, there weren't a lot of choices, and really the only choice you had before was to build your own. But there's, there's packs from Outline, there's packs from GetRC, Flywoo, iFlight has a whole bunch of new packs that they just came out with that I don't even have yet because they're so new. Um, most of the ones I had are from Outline. There's from there's a whole bunch of ones from uh, Zod HD or Zo HD. They typically make ones for airplanes. Um, I'll talk about it a little bit here in a second as to why that is. And I think uh, these four cells from GetRC and Flywheel have been popular with the four inch long range, claiming they can get maybe up to 30 minutes of flight time. And that's really under ideal conditions. And that's what you really do have to take uh, the consideration of ideal conditions and what that means. That usually means uh, good temperatures. So like, you know, not too hot, not too cold. Now, if you're trying to fly these packs in cold weather, these batteries do not perform very well at all. They perform very poorly in cold weather. Um, so if you are trying to use something like this, a lithium ion pack in cold weather, um, you know, try and keep these warm, like in your coat pocket or something, or in some sort of a heater where the temperatures don't get too cold and then fly them right away. Um, because as the temperature drops in the battery, the basically the performance drops considerably you get very shorter much much shorter flight times etc other things to consider um, in terms of getting the maximum performance out of these batteries is your flying conditions so if you're flying a lot of wind that's going to you know draw down the battery a lot faster so um you know you're not going to get 30 minutes out of this 4s uh, 3000 milliamp hour pack now there are some other well older some older lithium ion packs out there that I don't have. Um, if you guys happen to know what those are, you know, listen down in the comments below because they're kind of not so good. Most of the good ones these days are going to be using the VTC6 Sony cell. And so the GEPRC uses that. Uh, the Flywoo is also using that. And the Outline is also using this as well. You can see VTC6, 3000 milliamp hours. You can see they're all 3000 milliamp hours. So these are rated these cells are rated to a maximum uh, current output of 30 amps. There's a VTC5A Sony cell that is rated to 30 amp or 35 amps, and that has a lower uh, capacity rating of, I think, 2600 milliamp hours. I don't have that one. I'll list a whole bunch of these down in the description. Uh, not, not just the ones that are here, but there's a whole bunch of other ones from other companies. Some of the ones, you know, 
generally speaking, I think they're all going to be kind of the same because like I did testing with, you know, these two guys basically using the same cells, you know, for us, performance is virtually identical uh, in terms of current draw, in terms of capacity. Now the advertised capacity, as you can see here is 3000 milliamp hours. And I think I wasn't really getting quite that much. I was getting around, I think I, it kind of depends on, that's like an average here. I'm it's around 2850, 2875 on these guys. So this is probably, you know, it's good. There's going to be some variation, obviously, between packs. Not every pack is going to be exactly the same. Uh, but, you know, that's another thing about you know, consistency and testing and stuff. I mean, I, you you may buy this exact same GIP RC pack and may have much better, you know, capacity than me. I mean, you may get 3,100 milliamp hours. Um, but, you know, on average, I would say you're going to probably get around that or maybe a little bit less. So, you know, if you're looking, if you need to get exactly that, maybe you should go to a higher capacity pack, like this 3,500 milliamp hour here. This is a, this is a Zod HD mix. They make a 2S, a 3S, a 4S, a 6S, I believe. And there are all these 3,500 milliamp hour batteries. I think these use the Sanyo cells and um, I believe the current draw on these is a little bit less. It's not 30 amps, but you don't really need a lot of current draw on airplanes because uh, they're just uh, for long range. Or usually when you're trying to uh, trying to milk these batteries for longer flights, you're trying to get like five amps or less. So, you know, if these happen to be 20 or 25 amps, that's going to be plenty for an airplane. I don't know why they're using XT60s and some of these like, you know, packs for like planes. It's possible that um, most people that fly planes use XT60s and that's why they're, they're kind of catering towards their audience. Whereas like, um, you know, these uh, forest packs have the XT30s. They're more catered towards those uh, four inch uh, micro long range quads. So these typically use XT30s, but the XT30s are going to be plenty for these long range because you're not going to be drawing a lot of current. Now, when you get up to something like a 6S here, so this is a 6S outline, uh, also Sony VTC6, I think they make a 6S 2P as well, which is going to be, so instead of uh, basically six cells here, uh, you're going to have two sets of six cells. That's what the 2P would stand for in parallel. And so be, I think it'll be twice as long and twice as heavy as well. Uh, but you're going to want to, at that point, go to the uh, 60-60s because I, all the 7-inch ones that you're going to be using something like this on are going to be using the XD60 connector. So there's some of these older outline uh, 2000 milliamp hour packs here that I don't know what the cells are in here. These are okay. I have used these on some 5-inch, you know, just sort of like long endurance type flying. But if you do any kind of punch outs, you get a huge vulture sag and... Um, it doesn't really fly that great and it's a lower capacity battery as well. So, uh, you know, if you see something like this, you, you may want, you know, unless it's really cheap, you may want to avoid these and go for either the, the bigger 3000 or the, uh, 2600 milliamp hour packs. Those are going to usually be the Sony cells. And then again, they also use, you know, the XT60 connector on this one. There's also another one that Outline makes, I think it's like 2600 milliamp hours, I believe that has a much lower C rating. And that is not for using on quads. It's for, uh, it's basically, it's targeted for DJI goggles. Um, if you use that on a quad, there's a, on that particular battery, there's a voltage cutoff regulator inside the battery. And if it, if the voltage drops to a certain level, or if there, if there's too much current draw, it will basically turn the battery off and then the quad just falls out of the sky. So, uh, that's a safety feature, I think, for that type of battery because it's not meant for quads. So, you know, again, read the description of the product page that you're getting your batteries for because they may not be suitable for flying on quads. Okay, so I think that's going to do it for this video. You know, you know, again, I just want to reiterate here that this these aren't for performance. They're very heavy. They're going to feel heavy in flight. This is for flying a uh, like cruising style long range, you know, if you want longer flight times, that kind of thing. Uh, I, I, know, I do know for, for a fact that some people actually like that kind of, I don't know, flight feel. And they like the fact that they can land, take a break, and then just not have to charge a battery again and just plug it back in again and go take off again if they want. So, you know, uh, there's different kinds of people out there that want to use these kind of batteries for different purposes. But keep in mind, it's not for performance. It's for flight time. This is specifically for flight time. And 
I think we're going to see a lot more of these come on the market here. I believe, um, well, I, I can't disclose some of this stuff, but yeah, there's going to be other manufacturers besides iFlight that's going to be coming out with even more of these. So I think prices should improve. There's going to be a certain point where it's not going to get any better because, you know, uh, the cells, basically you're limited by the price of the cells. Um, but, you know, uh, putting these together, if they can mass mass produce them in, in, you know, in terms of larger quantities, the, the, the costs are going to start to come, come down and the prices will start coming down. So anyway, I'll list a whole bunch of these down in the product uh, description here or the product, or sorry, the video description, excuse me. And uh, I'll add more as newer, newer ones come out down the road. Um, so if you want to check back later, see what kind of new stuff's out there, I will post them down in the video description on this video and uh, you can check them out. Okay. So hopefully you find this video helpful and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.